I'm going to talk to you today about my gravity flyer and I'm going to talk in specific about this. This is the flyback transformer. A lot of you know it is a high voltage circuit. Now, here's the thing. I have zero intention of making this a spark app to make plasma or anything like that. The whole idea of this here is to replace this. This is my Wilmhurst machine. It puts out static volts. This is what I'm trying to replace with this. Now it seems like a strange concept, doesn't it? It goes to what I'm trying to achieve here. I do not want to achieve sparks. I do not want to achieve plasma. I do not want to produce ion wind. I'm looking for charges on a disk. So basically, like when you're little kids, you sit there in your socks and you rub your feet down the hallway on the carpet and it creates a charge. You go over and shock your little brother and you just get all excited about it. Well, I want the static charge that what's on you when you go down that hallway what I don't want is the discharge. I don't want the part that makes you happy that shocks somebody. I'm looking for that static charge. Now what I'm going to do is show you a series of videos and I'm going to explain this. And what I'm going to do is show you an experiment where we took the Wilmhurst and we used it and made the experiment function. Then we replaced the Wilmhurst machine with a flyback transformer absolutely amazing experiment exactly where i'm going to on this with my gravity flyer and the reason behind why i'm using it anyway check out the videos i think it's going to be a real big understanding for you guys of where this is actually going versus where you think it is let's take a look at our first experiment here you see the wilmhurst and what he's going to do is create a lift and there it goes the disc shaped object is actually just paper. You have a small disc on the bottom, a large disc on the top, and he is connecting his Wilmhurst to each side. What is he doing? He's creating a static volt in this. Now that we know that he's creating an electrostatic charge around the paper disc, let's take a look at another one of his experiments. Again, he's using the Wilmhurst here. What's the difference? Well, now his Wilmhurst gets connected on the lifter on the left is positive. The lifter on the right is negative. However, the bottom are both connected to an earth ground. Now, why is that? Because when you're dealing with static charge, because it's in our atmosphere, it creates the same effect with everything around it. So you can use an earth ground to create the same voltage difference between the top and the bottom. Or I should say charge difference is more specific in what he's doing. So, pretty interesting experiment, huh? Well, what else do we see here in the experiment? Take a look right there. You actually have two water bottles and they have sand in there and they're dampening with sand. Why does he have water in the sand? He's trying to replicate the atmospheric conditions so that he can create the charge. People want to know all the time on a gravity flyer, why does the weather matter? This experiment explains that. If you did this experiment at home, you would understand atmospheric condition a lot better when it comes to static charge. Again, we're looking for the static charge on here. Now you've seen everything here in these videos show you what it's like to use a Wilmhurst. Some shocking things to some of you out there. Why is he using tubes? Why not wires? What's the reason for the sand? All of these things are getting you to understand why weather changes your gravity fire experiment. Hopefully you start to see it here. It actually, the moisture in the air is what's causing the problem of the amount of charge. Now, if you understand this, it's easier to set it up in any environment. If you don't understand this, it's going to be a catastrophe for you. So, that's why I'm showing these videos in here so that you can see the difference. 
Now let's go ahead and take a look at some more experiments. I went ahead and tried to repeat the same experiment that Bob did. However, I wanted to change what I'm using. As you can see, I'll still get it to lift. Now what am I changing in this? What's the big difference? Well, instead of using the Wilmhurst machine, I went ahead and replaced it with a flyback transformer. Matter of fact, I used two of them, and I used them in series. Now as you can see here, I have two of them connected. They're connected to one ZVS. And all I did was connect the positive one to the negative of the other, and I just used both ends. One negative, one positive. This is the understanding. I replaced the Wilmhurst machine with these two high voltage coils, but getting the same result. So what did I actually achieve by doing this? Well, I removed most of the amps that go through it, and all I did was amplify the voltage going through it. So what happens? In these flyback coils, they remove all of the stuff that makes it spark. And now it's just getting static or a charge on the actual lifter itself. The paper lifter now has a charge on it. That's the understanding you're going to need to get. Now you've seen me take a Wilmhurst machine and replace it with a high voltage flyback transformer. Why is that happening? What, what is going on here? Well, it comes down to a simple concept. All we want is that static field. It's like running your drill and you have this voltage experiment and you're getting all this plasma. Well, I get shocked at daylights with my drill. I'm not touching anything metal. What's happening is static charge is being built up on my drill. So just understand this. That's exactly what we're looking for here. Now that we understand static charges, let's put another puzzle piece into place. What's going on with the charges on top when they go to the bottom? Here's the effect here. As you can see, I set up this paper lifter experiment upside down. What's going on is it's still pulling towards the big side. But, what does that mean? It means that the positive is always trying to go to the negative. So, the fields are trying to go down. So, we had Mike explain the toroidal effect. You have a toroidal on top, a toroidal on bottom, and a plate in between. What's happening? This is why your field is collapsing on the top, right here. It's actually pulling, because of the magnetic effect of what's going on here, it's actually pulling all of the positive off the top and pulling it to the negative on the bottom. Therefore, you have a full negative charge. You have collapsed your top toroidal. Now you have put all of that on the bottom. Now that we understand what we're looking for, we're looking for static charges on the top disc and bottom disc. So what's that going to create? You see on here that I have put in here a field around the top disc and a field around the bottom disc. Well, that's all I'm looking at creating. Nothing, nothing too special, just that. I'm not trying to create any sparks in it or anything like that. We're just trying to get those static fields put in there. This is just a further understanding when you see this of what we're looking at. Well, let's move back to the toroidals for a minute. Here's what I want you to understand about this. This, as you see it right now, is in balance. I have a top one, I have a bottom one, and I have a field on the outside. I want to lift this thing. So every time I want to lift, I need to create an imbalance. Therefore, that whole top bubble has to go away. And the bottom bubble has to be filled with the energy that was on the top. Now you have the concept of what we're getting at here. Balanced, it makes a magnetosphere. Unbalanced, it makes a lift. That's the understanding here. We're taking all the charges from the top. We're bringing them down to the bottom. They're all in negative charges. Please understand, this is what we're looking for in a grabby flyer. Again, has nothing to do with sparking. 
we're simply creating a static field around that disk and then we're collapsing it to the bottom and making an unbalanced equation here. We don't want it to be balanced if we want to lift. If we want to keep it steady where we are, then we rebalance it by creating the field on the top again. We do this based on what the actual magnets are doing below. They're pulling. Again, they're in the negative direction going up. So the top field is positive. Don't think that there's a magnetic charge on that disk? Well, there is. That's why that field is pulling straight down. It's going right to the negative and creating more power in the bottom motor when it does this in the negative field there. Again, a simple understanding of how this works gets you a lot further. Again, no high voltage here. Just a simple understanding of fields and how we're moving the fields to create a balance or imbalance, going from a magnetosphere to a lifter. Now that we've seen our experiments, we understand now what this high voltage circuit is doing in our gravity flyer. I hope this takes away some of the misconceptions that you're having. I know a lot of people look at this and they just think you're putting high voltage in there. Much You must be looking for a spark. You must be looking for this gravity flyer to lift on voltage. Well, it's not the case. Not at all. Not even what the high voltage coil is there for. If you look at other experiments, we look at T.T. Brown and we look at Otis T. Carr. Otis T. Carr, it'll show you right there in their blueprints. They're looking at using a Van de Graaff. Why? Because they want the same thing that we're getting out of this high voltage coil. The same exact effect. We're looking for an electrostatic effect here. We are not looking for high voltage. Hopefully that gets you to a little more understanding of this. So anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed what you saw today. I hope you guys learned something and I hope it gets you further in your project when you guys do this. Anyway, if you like what you saw here today, please like, share, subscribe, do all that fun stuff and have yourself a great day. Thank you. For those of you out there who the tubes drove nuts, let me explain it for you because I didn't earlier in the video. There's actually wires in the tube what you're actually getting out of the wire itself is bleeding. What I mean by that is anytime you hook up a flyback transformer to something and you don't use the correct size wire, you'll get shocked when you touch the wire. It doesn't mean you're touching the metal part. What it means is there's an electrostatic field generated on the outside of the wire itself. Therefore, you're going to get shocked. Why is he using the tubes? Well, it's to contain that. It's to take the maximum amount of the static charge and place it where he wants to. That's what's going on here. So if you ever hear me refer to the term of bleeding in one of these things, it's because the shielding isn't good enough on the wire to contain the actual voltage inside of it. So you get that shock on the outside of the wire, even though you're not touching the metal part of the wire. Again, I call it bleeding. Circuit people can call it something different, but that's my understanding of it and that's what's going on here. Anyway, I hope you uh, understood the insight. Thank you.